What's going on guys? Welcome to the wood pile. So a couple weeks back, um, we had a huge storm. Uh, took out the power for a couple days. This guy came down. Electric company had it all diced up and uh, tossed to the side of the road. Went with my stepsons and we picked up a bunch of this stuff. Um, so what we're gonna be doing this week is we're gonna run a little experiment. We're going to go from about as green as it gets. We're gonna do some shaping, some vacuum drying, and seeing how it goes. I've done plenty of vacuum drying in the past, but never from something that was absolutely freshly green. So we're gonna just, uh, you know, take some notes, measure the amount of water we get out of this, and have some fun doing it. So uh, I'm gonna get a piece picked, get it up over here, get her sliced and diced. He's a begging. Alright, as you can see, good and green. Wet to the touch, as a matter of fact. So, uh, hot, heavy, and in a hurry. Let's get this uh, guy cut up corners, uh, mounted up, shaped up into the vacuum chamber. So we got the piece up here on the lathe bed. Just gonna go ahead and mark out a happy diameter. Thinking that's gonna work. All right, that'll give me a little indication. I'm gonna get the corners chopped off here on the bandsaw. All right, so we're refixtured, rubbing the motor plate a little bit. This design sucks. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, let's get this uh, guy rounded out uh, like we were originally trying to do, and go from there.
gonna get some heat on this. We will check it out in the morning. See where we're at. All right, guys. So it's been about 12 hours. Just one little overnight session, as you can see. A lot of condensation built up on the lid. Um, I'm gonna get this pulled out and see what we got in the bottom, if anything. Uh, and just start trying my best to collect this water up so we can measure it at the end. Um, now, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to get it all, but we'll do our best. All right, guys, so we're mounted back up on the lathe. I went ahead and I pulled up a chart, which should be displaying here now. Uh, it was a study done by the U.S. Forestry Service using resistance uh, across two terminals using multimeter like these. Uh, they were measuring resistance and calculating moisture content. So, we're going to be using that list and we're going to see where we're at. Um, we're going to be measuring off of an inch and a quarter. Bread, and that's their standard. So somewhere around there. Now this is only going to give us dryness or moisture content of the absolute outside. I don't want to go throwing holes in this guy just yet, so or really at all. So I'm going to call it 3.2. So that sounds good to me for now. All right, now let's see if we can get the mortars cut into this thing. Get this uh, flipped around. Keep moving on forward. All right, so I got the piece flipped around. I'm liking the patterning we're getting out of this. Really liking the dip on this side. Although we do have a little bit of tear out in this bark layer. So we might end up having to drop the outside diameter a little bit just to match this up. Cause I don't know if you can see in here, it gets a little deep. We might have to go in like a 16th or so. Um, so before I get into any hollowing, I'm just going to go around here, uh, fill the uh, bark connection and as much of the bark as I can with some of the uh, thin star bond. And uh, we're going to be doing the same thing on the inside once we start opening up for hollowing. I just want to make sure we don't lose any of this or, you know, lose any chunks. So going to go through and get this all filled up and then we will pick up once I get this all done all right so I was a little upset to find out that there was actually a chunk of bark missing and I went hunting around the shop for about a half an hour. Well, we found it. I got that glued back in. I'm just gonna get all this top edge. I got a lot of it gone. You can see as she's smoking off as she cures. It's just what happens when you're using a bunch of this stuff. You get a lot of curing all at once. But uh, I'm going through and I'm just sealing up the whole inside inch, I'm trying to capture in some of this. Uh, fungal growth, we got some moss. Just trying to keep it as natural as we can. Make sure that it's nice and firm so that we don't get anything flying off and we can keep as much of this as possible. Mm 
All right, like nothing ever happened. I don't care about the mess that we're making on here. We're gonna have to scrape this down uh, until we get underneath all of our tear out here. We're, there's only one bad section right here and it's just in the intermediate bark layer. So, yeah, you know, comes with the territory. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna keep filling this bark and then we're gonna pick up uh, from the inside. I'm gonna core out, uh, we're gonna go, I don't know, one inch, two inch, maybe three. And then we're gonna take another reading with our multimeter and see if that is a, an actual viable method of uh, testing using against this uh, this chart from the forest service. I don't know, I never did any of the multimeter stuff before. Um, like I said, I usually just use vacuum drying for stuff that's been in the collection for a year plus, you know, just to be sure, extra safety measure, but I know it works. Let's start hollowing. I'm not gonna be going to our uh, finished wall thickness. Probably just gonna take out, I don't know, 75% of the inside and we're gonna get this back in the vacuum chamber and hopefully start drying uh, inside towards the middle of the wall. So here we're getting just round to 400. So that's 400 kilo ohms. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue uh, removing material until we have about a one inch wall. We're gonna get this guy back into the vacuum chamber under heat and then dry from both sides to the center. We will check our resistance on the inside. Um, I don't know how accurate the actual numbers are, but we have some data and we can see the difference between the outside and the inside and that's what we wanted. there for tonight we're about halfway in I'm just gonna restart the drying process I don't want to go too fast I do not want to initiate any uh, cracking um, especially now as I'm finding that we got a knot running through uh, the center of our piece getting a little grabby so uh, yeah we're just gonna go ahead and reset the vacuum chamber 
and start fresh tomorrow. Alright guys, so it is a day later, another day's worth of drying, I did notice we developed this one crack here, and a couple of little guys here, I'm just going to go ahead and run our resistance check across the inside here, see where we're at. So, one five, one six. So it's definitely drying out. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little more hollowing. See if we can't get closer to our finished wall thickness. And uh, just keep on going. Um, I did notice a little bit of shrinkage here in this bark line too. So until we get to um, our finished uh, dry point, we're just gonna leave the, and stay away just slightly from our uh, finish inside and out. But just want to keep removing material, keep on drying it out. This is just a test. guys um we just got pretty much down to our final wall thickness uh, i wanted to leave it a little bit thicker on this one just to leave some of this cool bark character um i'm gonna go ahead now this is probably gonna be as dry as we get it before finish i might leave it overnight depending on uh, what our test is saying so got the meter out i'm just gonna measure out our inch and a quarter spread so this is what day three of trying to dry this guy just gonna test i'm not too worried about marking it because we're gonna scrape this down a bunch yet so And I'm going to repeat myself. I'm not saying that this is like the way to do it, but we are getting data from checking it this way. All right, so I think we're safe in calling that around 41-ish. Now looking over here at our chart for black walnut, 41 puts us at a 14% moisture content. 
which isn't necessarily perfect, but sure not bad. Um, All right, cool. So we got that data point. Now we did end up with one crack. One that's worth noting, um, which is unfortunate because I really think this thing's going to turn out real nice. Now these cracks we had when we cut into this piece, I don't know, it could have been from when the tree came down. But uh, you can see that there was some water that got in there along the way. Actually, it looks pretty neat. It's kind of like some lightning. So, uh, before we go cutting this down, I'm going to get whatever cracks filled. Um, probably just get some of these little guys with clear. I'll do this with the uh, brown star bond. I'm thinking if we had a little better temperature control, probably could have eliminated that. But, you know, this is the first of this type of experiment that we're doing i'm sure there will be more to come and i'm sure different woods will react in a different way i'll have to see if i can get some kind of a better temperature control system set up but uh we're learning scraped up we're gonna get on with some sanding we're gonna start out with some 80 grit work all the way through to 320 and uh, we'll catch up back then All right, guys, we are sanded out to 320. Um, on this piece, I decided I'm going to do a little something different with the uh, sanding sealer. I'm going to be using this Omega 3 uh, Vita Fusion. Uh, no, wrong. No, no, this is just some clear lacquer. Uh, I cut it 50 50 with thinner. I just wanted to sink out. I'm trying to preserve this big color contrast and I want to keep this as light as possible um, so yeah that's what we're going to do let's we'll see what it does see if it works Side, then I get another coat on the whole piece, and we'll pick up somewhere around there. Uh. 
All right, guys. So today is tomorrow. Uh, we got our lacquer sanding sealer on here. Uh, just taking a look at the piece. Pretty cool. We got some really nice shine, especially on the inside. So, yeah, looking pretty good to this point. Um, my apologies if my energy has been a bit low to this point. I've been running on E for a little while, but I am feeling recharged and refreshed and ready to get back into this. Um, and I think I'm gonna switch gears a little bit uh, for what I had planned uh, for finishing this. Um, I'm thinking this is more of an art piece anyway, especially because of all this uh, really cool looking but fragile bark. So I think I'm just gonna finish this one out uh, with the clear lacquer. I'm gonna put a couple more coats on here and then I think we're just gonna polish it out with the micro mesh and uh, see what we come up with with that. I haven't really done a lacquer finish but I'm thinking this is gonna come out real nice, real nice uh, shine and gloss. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna knock down some of the high spots on here, just try and keep it even throughout. But uh, I think that's the direction that we're gonna go. <sighs> All right, so here's what happened. Going along, sanding out the outside, knocking down my brush strokes, working down all the little shiny spots, down, 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 dulling it out. Finally get to the end of the outside, I'm pretty happy with it. I think, yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm gonna move on to the inside. But you know, this uh, paper I've been using is a little dull, a little clogged. I just uh, run over and grab another piece. I need another sheet. So I went over to the cabinet, grabbed me another sheet of sandpaper, got to work on the inside. Didn't really think much of it for the first, I don't know, five or six seconds, but then I got to thinking, this feels like it's cutting a little heavier. Well, didn't I go and grab a sheet of 150 and cut right through my finish. So then, I walked back to the same cabinet, and I went and I found this here, nice lacquer spray. And I put a few coats of that on there. And I'm thinking to myself, we're looking pretty good to start on the micro mesh now. So, happy mistake boneheaded move you know stuff that happens in the workshop all right moving forward <sighs> gonna get on with the micro mesh get this all polished out whoopsie onward with the micro mesh uh, 1500 to 12,000 guys we are through the micro mesh I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and we're gonna take a look and see what we got 
What's going on, chicken taters? It's done. You wanna check it out? <laughs> oh man. Alrighty, here she is. Um this was ultimately an experiment. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the result though. I'm loving the live edge look. I really like the way the finish came out. Although I do feel like I could probably get a better polish on this. Uh, but yeah, it's got some beautiful, beautiful coloration. As you can see, we uh, preserved some of the fungal growth there. Uh, not too much of the moss stood out. It pretty much just gave us a little bit of texture. But I love the patterning that happens in black walnut bark. You just can't beat that. It's amazing in itself. It's, it's like almost beyond wood grain. All right, anywho, we gotta do that hard part where I have to think off the top of my head of uh, things to say. So uh, yeah, slow rollers at the end. <clears throat> um, this week's series of videos, there uh, is one uh, prior to this, and it's just about how we happen to acquire this year uh, Black Walnut. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, but the boys uh, are really missing uh, being home here, so this uh, series of videos is in homage to them. Miss you guys. Um, I hope you like this stuff and just seeing uh, what we can make out of the stuff that we collected. Um, I don't know guys, we're almost at 6K, 6,000 subscribers in a little over five months. I think we're at like five and a half months. That statement in itself is humbling. Um, I know there's there's a lot of YouTubers out there that uh, spend a lot more time grinding to get to where we are now. So <laughs> I couldn't even begin to thank you guys enough. Um, and as a matter of fact, with all of your support, uh, we got a new tool coming into the shop. We just ordered up a D-Way 5 8 inch bowl gouge and that's because you guys um in the near future i am going to be rolling out a frequently asked questions video i think i'm gonna add in a little bit of just kind of like about how all this started happening um we have a post up in the community section. If you would like to uh, ask a question, head on over to that community section and post your question on the post uh, in relation to our frequently asked question uh, video. I actually really look forward to doing that. And because uh, you guys give me so much love, I, like, I feel like I have all these new amazing friends and uh, spend so much darn time just grinding and I want to give something back to you guys I am rambling again that's a thing I do so uh, yeah some of the well the products that we use here it's pretty much just the uh, the Starbond stuff and lacquer and I I think the finish came out great um, much more to come guys this is this is this is what I do now so it's all about you your support is and has been amazing uh, like the video subscribe to the channel share it with your friends share it with the world I love you guys I will see you next week